With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Amos and Andy Christmas Show. With Christmas just a few days away, CBS Radio brings you transcribed the Amos and Andy Christmas Show. So here they are with their Christmas cast, Jeff Alexander's orchestra and chorus, and radio's all-time favorites, Freeman Gosden and Charles Carell. Amos and Andy. <laughs> well, this is Sunday. Let's go back to yesterday morning. Andy is out with Amos's little girl, Arbadella, on their annual tour of the store windows. Look in this window, Uncle Andy. Yeah, they sure got a lot of toys in there, ain't they? I've never seen so many toys. It's just like something you dream about. Yeah. Hey, there's something cute there. There's a paint set. Look what it says there. Junior paint set, $12.95, complete with easel. What's an easel, Uncle Andy? Easel? It's one of them things, uh... Well, all artists has got them. They can't do without them. Oh, but, oh, what do they use them for? Well, they wears them on the head. Uh, got a little tassel on them that keeps the head warm while they're painting. That's what they do. Oh, Uncle Andy, you know everything, don't you? Well, most everything. A couple of things might have slipped by me. I don't know. Oh, look, that's cute. What does that say? Uh, that's a baby doll set complete with preambulator. What's a preambulator, Uncle Andy? Well, uh, it's just like one of them measles, but it ain't got no tassel on it. <laughs> oh, look, Uncle Andy. Here's what I've been waiting to see. Yeah, that show is a pretty doll, Arbadella. Yes, that's a talking doll. That's the one I wrote and asked Santa Claus to bring me. But Daddy said I wrote the letter too late. You see, I only wrote it two days ago. Yeah, well, maybe your papa ain't got the money. I mean, uh, that ain't giving Santa Claus much time. Oh, isn't she pretty, though, Uncle Andy? Daddy said Santa Claus would bring her to me next Christmas. Oh, sure. You see, that'll give him more time. We're having a good time today, ain't we, Uncle Andy? I like being out with you. Yes, and I like being out with you, too, Arbadella. But there ain't no sense of standing outside this window eyeballing that doll all day. I guess we got to get on home now. Oh, Uncle Andy, couldn't I just look at the talking doll once more? Oh, sure, Arbadella, go ahead. <sighs> that sure is a pretty dress she's got on. Yeah. But when Santa Claus brings her to me next year, I'm going to make her a lot more pretty dresses. Pink ones. I can hardly wait till next Christmas. It's only a year. Oh, come in, King. Well, well, but and the Merry Christmas greetings of the season. Say, what you doing stressed out in bed there? Oh, I'm just laying down for a minute. I got a little woozy while I was out Christmas shopping with Arbadella. No, oh, well, you don't look too good around the gills. No, no. Yeah, you look a little like a flounder that's just been gaffed. Uh... <laughs> 
Yeah, I got a little string of some Christmas shopping for all your dear friends, and you want to remember especially this time of the year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I don't know what's wrong with me. I I took my temperature a few minutes ago, and the thermostat went up to 101. <laughs> That ain't good, Ender. Well, does that mean I am sick? Well, Ender, I don't want to alarm you nothing, but I had a cat once that had a temperature of 101. The next thing I knew, she started foaming at the mouth. <laughs> then she dove through the dining room window, landed on the street, and climbed 40 feet up a 20-foot tree. <laughs> and a half hour later, she had a litter of kittens, too. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think that I am that sick. Like I say, you probably wore yourself out with too much Christmas shopping. So I'm going to do you a big favor, boy. Uh -huh. Instead of having you come all the way up to my house with that big present that I know you done bought from me, I'll just take the thing with me now, save you the trip. See, Diana, I'm always thinking of you. Yeah, you got to think of your friends on Christmas. There's the spirit of good cheer, peace on earth, and mistletoe, and all that. Uh, kingfish. Yeah, at this season, I kind of choke up, Andy. I am still with the spirit of friendship and brotherly love. Uh, Kingfish. Oh, what is it, man, the old pal? I ain't got no present for you. <laughs> How would you like to have a punch in the mouth? Listen, Kingfish, don't you say nothing to me. I give you that pen and pencil set last year, and you didn't give me nothing. Yeah, well, then I can't explain that to you. Now, wait a minute. I'll tell you what I've done now. I done bought you a box of fine seagulls. Uh -huh. You know, Corona Coronas. Hmm. And I wanted them to be perfect for you. Yeah. And I, I thought I'd puff on one to see how they was. And the first one seemed to be a little too dry. So wherever I finished that one, I decided to puff on another one. And that one was too moist, you see. So I thought I'd try another one. Well, anyway, between the puffing and the drying and the moisting, why, the next thing I know, your Christmas went up in smoke, and it? <laughs> well, Kingfish, you see, it was all I could do to manage to scrape up something for Amos and his kids. I was too broke to get you anything this Christmas, Kingfish. Yeah, well, then, uh, I was just thinking now, if you want to go down to the friendly loan coming on the corner, why, they'd be glad to let you have it. Uh, come in. Oh, hi, Lightning. Hi. Uh, good morning, Brother Andy. How are you, Brother Kingfish? <laughs> well, Lightning, uh, glad you dropped by. I was just thinking about you. You know, you got to think of your friends at Christmas time. It's the spirit of good cheer, peace on earth. In this time of the year when the spirit of friendship and brotherly love spreads throughout the world. Kingfish, if you don't get out of here, I'm going to punch you right in the nose. You hear that? All right, all right. It certainly is a fine attitude to take at Christmas time. Goodbye to both of you bums. Well, Lightning, I see you done wrapped up them presents for me like I asked you to. Oh, uh, yeah, sir. I done wrapped each one of them separate. Uh... Yeah, well, that's good. But wait a minute, sir. How am I going to know which one is the crayon? Uh, oh, well, that's simple, Miss Andy. You see, on the crayons there, I put a K. Wait a minute. Lightning, don't you know that crayon starts with a C? Yeah, it do. Certainly. C-R-O-U-T-O-N-S, crayon. <laughs> well, uh, you, you ain't giving away many presents this year, is you, Miss Andy? No, I got a little something for Amos and Ruby. These toy soldiers I got for Amos Jr. is all right, but... I don't know if Abadella's going to like these crayons or not. Ah, oh, the sure she'll like them. And anyway, uh, what do you know what she like and what she don't like, Miss Anna? Well, there's the trouble, Lightning. I do know what she like. I was broke and... Say, Lightning, what time is it? Uh, it is about one o'clock, Miss Anna. One o'clock? I'm just getting an idea here, Lightning. Let me get up here. I think I'm going to take a walk down to that department store on the corner. <laughs> You want to see me? Uh, I guess so. Is you the gentleman to do the hiring for the department store? That's right. My name is Simmons. Yeah, well, I was wondering if you needed any extra sales help for this last-minute rush this afternoon. I would work hard. Well, we did need extra help up until this morning. But I think we can get through the rest of the day with the salespeople we have. Oh, well... Thank you just the same, Mr. Oz. Say, uh, wait just a minute. Uh, yes, yeah, sir, yes, sir. Maybe we, you can help us. Uh, uh, what's that? Well, one of our Santa Claus helpers was called home. His wife was taken ill suddenly, and, well, we could use somebody to take his place. Do you think you could do it? 
uh, be Santa Claus's helper? That's right. Well, I ain't never done it before, and I don't, uh... Show, show, I can do it. Fine, fine. You go down and see Mr. Walker on the fourth floor. He'll give you your Santa Claus suit and whiskers. Then come back here, and I'll tell you just what you're supposed to do. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Brown, you look very well in that outfit. Yes, sir. I see you've got that pillow in there just right. That ain't no pillow. That's me. <laughs> well, I think you're going to make a fine Santa Claus, Mr. Brown. Yes, sir. Now, what must I do, Mr. Simmons? Well, uh, you can get into the toy department right through the back door of my office here. The Santa Claus chair is right there. Yes, sir. And I just sit there and talk to the children, huh? That's right. You just have the children come up one at a time, and if you run into any difficulties of any kind, just call the floor walker. Mm, yes, sir. If I have any trouble, I'll call the floor walker. Good luck, Santa. Right through that door there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, there's the Santa Claus chair. A lot of children waiting already, too. Oh, they don't spot me. Hey, quiet, 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 kids. Quiet. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I better sit down here and get started. All right, Sonny. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> you is first. Come right up here and sit on Santa Claus's lap. Ha, ha, ha. That's the boy. Now, tell Santa Claus, uh, what did you want for Christmas? I want a hop along Cassidy hat, a hop along Cassidy shirt, hop along Cassidy spurs, hop along Cassidy belt, a hop along Cassidy gun, hop along Cassidy boots. And a hobble on Cassidy toothbrush. Well, and tell me something, little fella. Just who is your favorite cowboy star? Roy Rogers. <laughs> hey, uh, you is a nice little boy, you know it. What is your name? Sammy Jackson. Well, tell me something, Sammy. Uh, have you been a good boy? Yes. Yeah. I ought to know that without asking. <laughs> you look like a smart little fella. I bet you were smart in school. No, I ain't. You ain't smart in school? No, I ain't. I bet you try hard, though, don't you? No, I don't. Well, uh... <laughs> you're going to try hard after you go back after the vacation, though, ain't you? No, I ain't. I ain't never going to try hard because I hate school. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. Oh, floor walker! <laughs> Come over here, Floor Walker. If I get everything I ask for, I'll try hard. Uh, never mind, Floor Walker. That's a good little boy, Sammy. You just hang up your stocking and everything's going to be all right. Okay, thank you, Santa Claus. Yeah. Am I next? Yeah, you is next. My, my. Say, you is a sweet little girl. Now, what can Santa do for a pretty little girl like you? Mommy said when I came up here, I could sit on your lap. Oh, sure, yeah. Let me lift you up here. Mm, there you is. You as light as a feather. What's your name, honey? Patricia Washington. Mm, that's a pretty name, too. And that's a pretty little coat you got on there. My mother made it for me. She made my hat, too. Well, Patricia, I suppose you come up to tell me what you want for Christmas. No, Santa. I wrote you a letter about that. I just came up to visit with you. Oh, well, that was nice of you, yeah. I guess when you've been out delivering presents all Christmas Eve, when you get home, you must be awfully tired, Santa Claus. Uh, yeah, I guess I is pretty tired of that, yeah. And I'll bet your little girl comes up to you and throws her arms around you like I do when my daddy comes home tired. Well, uh, no, honey, my little girl don't do that because, you see, I don't have no little girl. I live by myself. All by yourself? All by myself. Then, just for today, I'll be your little girl. Here. Oh, thank you, honey. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I, uh... Why, Santa Claus, didn't you like it having a little girl hug and kiss you? I noticed there's a tear running down your cheek. Oh, no, honey. I, I like that more than I could ever tell you. Now, don't you pay no attention to that tear. It's, 
It's just that at Christmas time, your eye is liable to do funny things to you. And I'll tell you something else, too. Santa is really going to come to your house this year. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Santa Claus. Merry Christmas to you, honey. All right, who's next? I'm next. <laughs> uh, uh, come right up, Sonny. Uh, uh, what's your name? Jonathan Waldorf Curtis Higgins, the third. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll just call you Johnny. Now, uh, what do you want for Christmas, Johnny? Wait a minute. Before I tell you, are you the real Santa Claus? Well, uh, I have Santa Claus's helper. Well, I guess that's okay. But I don't like doing business with no middleman. Oh, ha, ha, ha. You know, talking to me is just like talking to Sandy yourself. I got the sleigh and the reindeers and everything. Oh, yeah. Well, all right, then. Just what are the reindeers' names? Uh, you want to know the reindeers' names? Well, if you're Santa Claus helper, you ought to know the names. Yeah, well, there's uh, Donner, Blitzen, Thunder, Prancer, and, uh, uh, Stinkin', Blinkin', and Nod. <laughs> what do you want for Christmas, Johnny? I want a electric train, I want a bicycle, and I want a model airplane with a real gasoline engine. Yeah, well, that's all pretty expensive stuff, but I don't know if you're going to get all of that. Oh, you don't, huh? No. Say, lean over here a minute. Yes, sir. I mean, uh, well, 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 what you want? Now, listen, Bert. Do I get that stuff, or do I have to punch you in the nose in front of all these kids? <laughs> oh, floor walker! <laughs> uh, well, Sonny... You see this, Fisk? Uh, never mind, floor walker. Okay, you'll get the stuff. I'd better. Yeah, all right, all right. Uh, who's next? I am Santa Claus. Oh, uh, step right up, Sonny. Yes, sir. And what's your name? William Smith. Yeah, well, William, I suppose a big fella like you want a cowboy suit for Christmas, too, huh? Nope. Electric train? Nope. Bicycle? Nope. Pair of boxing gloves? Nope. Well, tell me, William, what would you like? A baby sister. <laughs> you, you want a baby sister? Yes, how can I get one? Oh, floor walker. Well, you look a little worn out, Mr. Brown. Oh, yeah, I is a little tired. I never talked to so many kids in all my life. Gee, they is cute, though. You did very well. All the children seemed very happy. And the parents were just standing there beaming. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, sir. We certainly appreciated having you here this afternoon. Yes, sir. Well, I enjoyed it, too. And, of course, like I told you, when I made the deal with you, I'd done it for a special reason. Yes. And here it is, Mr. Brown. I had the stock boy take it out of the window. The talking doll. <laughs> Coming to you with the best wishes of CBS Radio. It is our way of saying Merry Christmas to you all. Well, that brings us up to this evening, which is Christmas Eve. Andy, with his arms full of presents, has come up to Amos's apartment. Come in, Andy. Merry Christmas, boy. Say, hey, Amos, is the kids around? Oh, no, they are all in bed. Uh, Arbidella's the last one. She just went to bed a few minutes ago. Yeah, well, I didn't want none of the kids to see me come in with these packages. Let me put them down here under the tree. Oh, gee, you got a lot of stuff to Andy. Look like you didn't forget nobody. Yeah. Where's Ruby? Well, she and her mama went to church for Christmas Eve services, and I kind of babysitting with the children tonight. Well, I got a present here for you, Amos. Oh, thank you, Andy. And here's something for your wife, Ruby, and here's something for her mama. And I got a box of them toy soldiers here for Junior. Oh, that's wonderful. What you got in that big box, Dan? Oh, that. Well, that's a special gift, Amos. Uh, that's for Arbadella. Arbadella? Yeah, I didn't put no card on it, so... 
just tell her that this is from Santa Claus. Oh, well, Annie, he sure is wonderful to the kids, not only on Christmas, but all the time, boy. Well, you know, Amos, I ain't never had none of my own, so I guess the next best thing is kind of being Uncle Andy to all of yours. Yeah, where are you headed for now, Andy? Well, I'm going to spend Christmas Eve with the kingfish. We're putting on a little dinner party. We done bought a 12-pound turkey. Oh, that's nice. Uh, how many is you have going to be here? Just me and him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be running along and wish everybody a Merry Christmas for well, Merry Christmas to you, too, Andy. I'm going back with Arbadella now. I see she's asleep. You know how kids is on Christmas Eve. Yeah, well, so long, Amos. So Thanks long. again, Andy, and see you tomorrow. Merry Christmas. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, Lord. Well, Arbadella, look at you. I thought you'd be sound asleep by now, and there you were sitting up in bed. Oh, Daddy, I'm so excited. I don't think I can sleep tonight. Yeah, well, honey, everybody's got to sleep tonight. Uh, just because Santa's coming in the morning, why, you can't stay awake all night. Uh, he won't come if people will stay awake. How long before he'll be here, Daddy? Well, I tell you, you put your head down on the pillow and go to sleep. Now, if you will sleep, it'll only seem like one minute before Santa will be here. Daddy, I'll try. I certainly am excited, though, Daddy. Well, I guess all little kids are excited tonight. Daddy, can I turn on the little radio before I go to sleep? Well, just for a minute or two. I'll snap it on for you. There he is. Now let it warm up for a few seconds. We don't want to wake up your little brother and name of Sandra. Oh, music never wakes them up, Daddy. Well, let me straighten your covers out a little bit. Did you said your prayers? Mommy heard my prayers before she went out, Daddy. The Christmas choir continues with the Lord's Prayer. Well, now get under the covers, honey. Daddy, could you get some Christmas music on the radio? Why, darling, this is the very best Christmas music you could get. There's going to sing the Lord's Prayer. Oh, I've been saying the Lord's Prayer with Mommy. She's been teaching it to me. Yes, I know she is. What does the Lord's Prayer mean, Daddy? Well, it means an awful lot. And with the world like it is today, it seems to have a bigger meaning than ever before. But what does the Lord's Prayer really mean, Daddy? The Lord's Prayer? Well, darling, I'll explain it to you. Oh, will you, Daddy? Yeah, now you lay down and you listen. All right. Now, the first line of the Lord's Prayer is this. Our Father, which art in heaven. Now, that means... Father of all that is good, where no wrong can ever dwell. And then it says, Hallowed be thy name. Now that means, darling, that we should love and respect all that is good. And then it says after that, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now that means, darling, as we clean our hearts of all hate and selfishness and fill our hearts with the love, the good, the true, and the beautiful, then earth, where we are now, will be just like heaven. That would be wonderful, Daddy. Then it says, give us this day our daily bread. Now that means to feed our hearts and minds with kindness with love and with courage which will make us strong for our daily task. And then after that, the next line of the Lord's Prayer is, and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Do you remember the golden rule? Yes, Daddy. Well, that we means that we must keep the golden rule and do unto others as we would want them to do unto us. And then it says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now that means, my darling, to ask God to help us do and to see and to think right, so that we will neither be led or tempted by anything that is bad. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now that means, darling, 
that all the world and everything in it belongs to God's kingdom, everything. Your mommy, your daddy, your little brother, your sister, your grandma, you and everybody. And as we know that and act as if we know it, that, my darling daughter, is the real spirit of Christmas. That's good, Daddy. Well, now I guess I ought to cut off the radio and let you go to sleep. Good night, Daddy. Good night, sweetheart. Daddy, will you leave the little radio on while I go to sleep? All right, I'll leave it on, and you can listen to some Christmas music. David's Bridal, where brides and bridesmaids get fabulously dressed. We let our friends pick out what we wear, show off our dance moves, obsess over every little detail, hold your hand through it all, smile bravely when it's time to let go, make your dreams come true. The things we do for love, only at David's Bridal. David's Bridal, where brides and bridesmaids get fabulously dressed. We let our friends pick out what we wear, show off our dance moves, obsess over every little detail, hold your hand through it all, 
smile bravely when it's time to let go. Make your dreams come true. The things we do for love. Only at David's Bridal.